This is our street via Roma, Ortigia, in Sicily, part of Syracuse, and Helen has just emerged from our front door, and she wants me to come. I think I'd better catch up with her, but you can see the sea down there. We'll go and join Helen at the sea. See in Via Roma that even quite modest homes have uh, their verandas reflecting the Baroque style of grander palaces. Again, the mouth of Via Roma, we are now on the Lungomare, the road which runs around by the sea, and I'm using this in a zoomed manner, which is rather messy to look at. Um, but I want to just take you down here over the rail so that you can see the lovely clear quality of the sea. Again we are on the Lungomare on Ortigia Island in Syracuse. This is to show you the facade a Baroque church, just a plain old ordinary Baroque church from the end of the 17th century or the 1600s. Um, Helen was just speculating about why uh, the facade looks so the rest of the building is entirely different condition. It may well be that this is uh, bomb damage from the Second World War or any number of other events in history in between. We have left the Lungomare as it looked out over the open sea and now here we are walking through this street which must have a name which has uh, a couple of Afitasi signs in the window. Nice place to rent if you can do it. Uh, a rather grand old building there with lots of pots. And here we looked, we are now looking into the harbour of Syracuse and here's a young lady pulling wonderful wonderful faces. Now we're on the harbour side and as you'll see in this picture the body corporate ideas here about what you hang out in front of the house are somewhat different from those of most Australian places but they are very sensible. Here we have the harbour of Syracuse it is Sunday afternoon and the world is sitting down to lunch while the Navy makes this terrible noise or Coast Guard. In the evening when people go out for a walk after the shops reopen at five you have what is called the passeggiata when it is how the whole village traditionally, the whole world, comes out on the street to enjoy the evening. And that's what's happening really here on Sunday afternoon too. How's this for a glorious front yard? See the prickly pear in flower? And the great, great, great warm saturating view. This is a mystery to people because it's the it's papyrus which shouldn't be growing here. Nobody knows quite how it came here. But we all have a look. We are at Tourist Central here, so in organizing ourselves somewhere to eat tomorrow a dinner for San Valentino, we will, I think, find somewhere slightly further away from the melee. Here we are with another view of the papyro, the papyrus, 
and of the tourist lunching spots. Oh, it's also the locals' lunching spot for Sunday too, to be fair. Down the end there of this pointed peninsula of uh, Syracuse Harbour, across a little bridge in fact, or it was before, you see just a little bit of the Castello Maniace. Maniace being the Italian for Maniacus, George Maniacus having been uh, a ruler of southern Italy for as a colony for Greece uh, and also having built the, the first castle here in about 1100. This however was actually built at the direction of Frederick II several centuries later retaining the name Mania, 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 not Maniacus but Maniace. Bikes. I don't think we need bikes. I was only gone 40 minutes and I circumnavigated the whole island. Yes. But it's a nice rental scheme. Yes, fun. There's fun a rental to scheme. The cars. Mm, there's a similar scheme in Rome, but I think I would prefer to try and ride a bike here than Rome. Here along this part of the waterfront there are some truly grand buildings. We'll go see some of them now. Here you have quite a lovely courtyard, little piazza. And you can see the extraordinary detail and quality of construction. Also variety of whatever numbers of years, but particularly with the Baroque. And now the camera is going to look up this lane here and we will proceed to see the extraordinary cathedral. These buildings here are from the 1500s, 1600s, and you can see even in the simple detail of the wrought iron verandas there is a curvy Baroque look. But again, we're heading up to the Grand Piazza. Here is Helen checking out the menu for tomorrow, ducking in to see what sort of a restaurant it is. Oh, I see why she went to have a look in there. Isn't that grand? Isn't that lovely courtyard? Ristorante La Terrazza. The restaurant was unoccupied at two o'clock, which is not a good sign. So we're going to look for somewhere else for San Valentino tomorrow. Meanwhile, as we go back towards the street, just to show you some detail of this simple entrance. So here we are then, at the seat of government, the Syracuse government, the cathedral, the bishop's residence and the bishop's garden in behind this gigantic fence. Latin inscription on this building it says it was built in 1618. Church building, bishop's office. Then you have the cathedral. Then you have the government of Syracuse. And of course also in a place like this you have very glamorous restaurants uh, of a kind which we will avoid going to. So we will leave the Grand Piazza and the tourists a bit and we'll go back to the quieter streets, the smaller narrow streets. Just 
checking the map to see where in all the fiddly fiddly streets we should be going. Probably back down there to the right. Meanwhile, we take a little film, see the lady putting the washing out. The yellowish building is the Museum of Sicilian Puppets, which we might try to get to. And here is St. Joseph San Giuseppe. Well, we walked all the way across Via Roma and never noticed, but never mind, that gives us a chance to show you once again some of the Lungomare. We're not far from home. So here we are, coming back to the last moment at the Via at the Lungomare. You see that the day has turned grey and overcast and there's a cold wind blowing. But we're nearly home to our warm apartment now. So that's Ortigia Syracuse.